Hi, how is everyone today? This is Kalua with Collusion Health and Harmony, and I hope you're feeling pretty amazing. I am coming today. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I've been doing over the last month or so, some of the presentations that I've done, the workshops, um, things of that nature. Sort of with that underlying theme coming out of all of that has been this idea of how we carp compartmentalize things, right? We put things in these little categories and then they become so that they're not even related at all. Um, I'll explain that more. <laughs> so I first want to say that I don't necessarily think that putting things into categories is a bad thing. Sometimes when the picture is so big, it can be overwhelming. And so if we are just trying to look at one little aspect and we are bringing in all these pieces to it, it, it can just get into this really big state of overwhelm. So I don't think compartmentalizing is a bad thing. However, what I do want to encourage is to not actually ignore or forget about the big picture. Don't leave the big picture out. So I'll give you some examples. Um, you know, one of the things, of course, as a health coach that comes up a lot for, for me and the people that I'm working with is food, right? Movement, staying in shape, you know, different things in those categories, of course. And what I find is people sort of put those into a separate category of its own. So eating right just means, yeah, I can lose weight. Maybe I'll look good. Maybe I'll prevent some health diseases. All right, you know. So when that's the only reason for eating right, then what that becomes is, well, why? Why eat right? You know, um, are you interested in losing weight? Well, maybe sometimes you are, sometimes you're not. Maybe. And are you wanting to prevent some health problem? Uh, probably. But you're not really worried about it right now because it's not an issue for you right now, right? Um, some of the other things that I've gotten into is movement. And using movement um, a lot of times really gets in that category of Physical exercise, again, losing weight, preventing <laughs> diseases. So that same idea. And what I'm here to do is to challenge you, to challenge you to think about the big picture when it comes to these um, these key things uh, of fueling, fueling you, fueling your body, fueling your mindset, fueling. And look at when you don't eat well. How do you feel? You know that there's that guilty indulgence that every time you eat it, you feel like, <laughs> you know, but it's really good, so you do it anyway. But when you feel like, <laughs> where is your mindset? Is it all about how you can get out and conquer the world? Or is it more of the lines of, oh, I'm going to go crash on the couch maybe and do a Netflix marathon, <laughs> more along those lines. So, which is fine if you want an indulge time every now and then. However, when that becomes your everyday, your norm, then that's what's going to be, right? So, so, you know, the food, the movement, it all starts to feel your mindset, which is going to affect not just losing weight, looking good, preventing disease. It's going to affect your success, right? Your success at work, in life. It's going to affect your relationships, right? If you're having those mood swings up and down from the foods that you're eating or you're not getting all of your emotions out of you from your movement, right? Your moods are going to be all over the place. That's definitely going to affect your relationships, both personally and professionally, right? Um, we're going to affect, like, your inner satisfaction, right? There are parts of you that sometimes feel like you're serving the whole world. 
and you're not doing anything for yourself because when you have five minutes, you don't have the energy to do anything creative for yourself. So now it's going to start to affect the way that you feel satisfied in this life and then the way you feel about yourself. A lot of times we make these goals for ourselves and then when we can't commit to them, now we feel like a personal failure. So now we've got that inner voice telling us terrible things about ourselves. So I can't. All these different pieces, right? And I could probably go on and on and on, and I don't want to keep you too long because I know you're busy. So just a quick example of how it can spread out and reach out to almost every aspect of your life. When you look at the habits of successful people, just takes, you know, use, use some time to just start observing the world. Observe the world. Are highly successful people sitting outside of their office, you know, chain smoking? Are they, um, or are they dedicating time in their calendar to go do their movement or, you know, to, to take care of themselves? Really, when I, I do an analysis of just watching the people around and, and, you know, just taking notes, I really see that highly successful people are so motivated to fuel themselves so optimally so that they can get out there and conquer the world. And that is just really some food for thought, I think. Just think about it. So I hope that this was a good one for you. Let me know if it speaks to you and if you have anything that you want to add or share. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I'll see you soon. Bye.